and welcome to our little segment. Um, this is for our Chronicles to Fursy Patreon members, in which we always have a little session after we record the main pod, and it will be about a specific uh, topic of discussion. This time around, considering that the market ended last week, um, we thought we'd discuss all the latest transfer action that happened. And it wasn't exciting. It wasn't exciting all around Europe. There wasn't a big player that moved. Um, for the first time in about three years, we haven't had Lukaku trying to change either. Um, so it's it's been somewhat depressing to watch, in all honesty. But that doesn't mean that there haven't been many movements. Cyril Ngonj, who... Uh, scored a goal but actually it was then registered as an own goal was the most expensive signing in Serie A in the January transfer window um, followed by Bologna's Santiago Castro and Roma's Tommaso Baldanzi so those were the three biggest ones of course that doesn't include the loan transfers for example Juventus brought in a player um, Charlie Alcaraz Carlos Alcaraz from Southampton um, and if they do decide to keep him, then it's a hefty fee that they will have to pay over the summer, which would make him the most expensive player. Um, but I just, uh, I guess we're here to discuss who did the best, who actually, um, Napoli, for example, were very busy in this transfer window. Um, they tried to bring in players. They made it clear that they had gone in for Drangusin and actually offered a lot of money. Um, and I guess I want to say... I want to ask both of you. Um, I'll start with you, Patrick. Is there a particular move that stood out for you? Um, and what do you think in particular of Napoli's, uh, the players that they brought in from Mazzocchi to Traore and Gonj and uh, Donka? Yeah, I think Napoli's is a bit of a, a bit hit and miss, really. A bit mm. frenetic, the way that they've they've gone into the market. I think um, Ngonj, uh, or Ngonge, as he's now, asked us to to call him. He's clarified that after his move to Napoli. It would have been nice if he told us when he first signed for Verona, <laughs> but there we go. Um, I think he's a good player. I, re I really like him. He's a, he's, a, he's a valid alternative to Politano, a, you know, a left-footed right winger who can beat a player, who can make things happen, be it from open play or from dead ball situations. Hamid Traore, we've seen the junior Traore. We've seen him in the past with Sassuolo. He, he is suited to the system, but it's a bit weird because... We mentioned it on the main pod. Nicky mentioned about now reigning Polish footballer of the year. Piotr Zielinski has been left out of Napoli's Champions League squad. And De Laurentiis tried to justify that by saying we need to have a look at Traore. But he's um, <clears throat> he's more of a, to me, he's more of a, a wide player. Uh, left winger in a 4-3-3 in a or perhaps even a false nine as opposed to him playing as part of a, of a midfield unit. We've still got a lot of question marks about Napoli. Mazzari's presumably not going to be there beyond the summer. They felt that they needed to bring in Mazzocchi. I think that was a good signing. It's one of those where you almost forget it happened in January because it happened right at the start of the window, which, lest we forget, lasts for a month. And Mazzocchi can play right midfield, left midfield, right back, left back. So his versatility helps. Den Donka has barely kicked a ball this season. I don't really see the the utility in that particular move. I think it's just been, it's been a season to forget all round for Napoli. And this is a bit like slamming the stable door after the horse has bolted. And um, I don't think the players that they've recruited improve the team a great deal beyond uh, Ngonga, who I think could be could be very useful in, in seasons to come. Yeah, it was an interesting one. I, I, I tend to think the same as you, Patrick. It, it felt a bit like echoes to me of um, how they went about hiring their manager in the summer. It was just like, oh, <laughs> crap, we've got to do something. Let's just throw our arms out in all directions and see what we grab um it, it was it, it felt a bit all over the place um I suppose you could make a case that other than Ngonge they, they haven't really put big money into anything mm. um Madzoki is for three million euros a, a, a cheap pickup you know you're getting someone who we've talked about his story before on, on the podcast he's someone who is from Napoli originally has had this fantastic story where he's gone almost all over the country except for back to Naples and finally gets to come home to Naples. Um but uh and 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 so for, for three million euros you're kind of making a trade off there with um with him coming in and and um and and just having another body really more than anything else and and saying I think for that sort of price you can you can 
view it as a, a not significant investment in something that's partly about getting you through to the end of the season and adjusting your team slightly to what Mazzali's doing in the short term. Um, yeah. And I think that the Ngonge signing, you can offset a bit with saying, well, we sold Elmas, right? Elmas was, mm. I think, about 20, 24 million euros is what they have on, on transfer market going out. Ngonge comes in for 18 million. So you haven't really, you haven't really spent money net in this transfer window. And, and so it's kind of okay. But I, I'm not really sure that there's been much sort of good planning that's gone into this. And I do look at it and think still it's got the hallmarks of De Laurentiis where before there felt like there was some sort of plan under Juntoli, which De Laurentiis would never accept. It was never Juntoli's, Juntoli should get no credit for it whatsoever. Um, but uh, but I think that you take him out of the room, and I I think that the whole policy feels a bit less structured. And I I also just think it's sad because this was an extraordinary team last season, and it feels like gosh, is this how far we've fallen? That instead of talking about them defending their title in any serious way, it's grabbing a few odds and ends here and there to plug a Matsadi system until the end of the season. Yeah, I mean. It It is that. It does seem like they've just picked up players that would be suitable to what it is that Mazzari is going to be trying to do or the way or the directions that they're moving ahead. And actually, I mean, for in their particular match, I mean, it was against Verona, so it's not exactly, you know, the world's strongest opponent. But Mazzocchi and Ngonge, um, as I shall now be referring to him, <laughs> actually did uh, did a good job. Um, That's okay. had the assist in the second goal, didn't he? Yeah. And so... Yeah. I mean, these are not like outrageously good players. Uh, I do, I do feel like I've watched this whole Napoli side, and I don't remember Osman playing anymore. Um, I feel like every, you know, he, I don't remember the last time that he played for this team. I, we actually haven't talked about that because obviously he made a, a huge um, interview, and it's been confirmed that he will leave over the summer. Where on earth are are Napoli going to go without Gentoni? Um, in trying to get a, a great striker, one who could actually at least try to replicate the form that we've seen from all the all the strikers that have come before him, whether it be, um, you know, obviously Osimhen, uh, Cavani, uh, Iguain. I mean, this is something that Napoli have done really well, which is always bring in great strikers. And losing Osimhen, it will be a lot of money, and they will have a lot of money to spend. Are there any great strikers for them to go for? They could. Go back for Petania and Pavoletti, two of their former strikers <laughs> playing at Cagliari at the moment. No, I, I think that's all right. I'm just being a bit facetious. Yeah, I think for every Osimhen and Higuain and Cavani, there are unfortunately some other players that haven't necessarily worked out. Depends what, what sort of approach they want to take. Um, you know, if you can get enough goals from all over the team, if you play enough, if you have enough interchange, then there's probably an argument you could keep Simeone and Raspadori. But I do think they're, they're probably a, a major centre forward away from being very good. I wonder whether you start to look at those English suitors and maybe you try and extract a big fee for Osimhen and with him also get a player from either Chelsea or Arsenal if you're going to sell him in that sort of direction. You know, their, their strikers haven't worked out. So, but then it all, do you want to just look at it yourself and try and again find a player who is either underrated or unproven? Do you go and sign Joshua Ziyech? Say it's not the same profile of player, but he's already familiar with the league and he's he's playing very well. So it, it, I think all of that will be dictated as and when they actually start to figure out their plans with who's doing what, who's going to be the head coach, how much of a role the uh, the sporting director has. And, you know, it, it seems like De Laurentiis still has too much of a say on everything. Um, and until I think he takes a step back, it's going to be quite difficult for, for Napoli to have clear ideas. So, yeah, the, these January signings feel to me like a way of trying to somehow arrest the decline of what's been a terrible season. And they're still not far away from Champions League football. So maybe maybe they'll have that, that season where they come fifth and it happens that Inter get an extra spot in next season's Swiss format of the Champions League and all is well and they get proceeds from, from being in Europe and, and in the Champions League. But... Yeah, I, I don't think these January signings are inspiring. And I think Osimhen, the fact he's leaving is, is no surprise. It always looked like that contract extension was simply a way of formalising the fact that he was going to leave and that Napoli were going to get what they feel is fair price for him. Because it's, you know, you scratch our back, we scratch yours. We've given you a big shop window. You've performed on it. Now you're ready to do bigger and better things. But you will not be leaving on a free, nor will you be leaving on uh, a cut price deal because you've got a year left on your contract. 
Yeah, there's no secret there. He, he, he's not... The, the tricky thing with Osman is he's not really performing this season as well as he did last season. Even in the Africa Cup of Nations right now, I think he's scored one goal so far. Mm. Nigeria's still in the semi-finals, so uh, opportunity with the shop window to... to stretch to, it off. Yeah, so exactly so. Mm. Um, so we'll see. So I, but I, I do think he's... His market value last summer was certainly over that 100 million mark. And and now, I don't know if it's going to be quite as easy as sell, but probably it will be. Would football. you take him at Arsenal, Nicky? Mm. Yeah, because I think he's brilliant. <laughs> Good. But, yeah. I I'd wish. love to see him at either Arsenal or Chelsea. I think Arsenal would be mm. great if, if I mean, obviously for you, I'd love them to win the league this season. But if they didn't and then he came in and they won the league, I think that'd be an amazing story. Maybe Napoli can go for like Ivan Tony. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> right. Moving swiftly on after <laughs> that comment, um, let's uh, let's talk about um, Roma because uh, they they brought in. Well, I mean, I think it's quite funny that they brought in Hulson, um and because he was so desperate to play under Mourinho, <laughs> managed one game, and then Mourinho was sacked. Um, born in Angelino from Galatasaray, a fullback, and of course Baldanzi which everyone was really excited about. Valdanzi is one of the Italian youth players that everyone's been watching, um, massively talented, but hasn't played a lot this season for Empoli because of, of various injuries. He did come on um, against Cagliari uh, for Dybala in the 74th minute. Hulson managed to score a goal, a brilliant header in all honesty. Um, and they let Belotti go to Fiorentina, which I'm really happy about because I, I really feel like this could be a match made in heaven because mm. it's <laughs> Fiorentina create a lot of opportunities. I know he hit the woodwork, but I really want him to. Serial Chronicles is a Production.